Cole Aaron, what impressed you most about the way Garrett Cole threw the ball tonight? Um, I just think he's in such a good place with his fastball. Um, uh, you know, driving it to different lanes. Uh, but I think he's he's really really in tune from a delivery standpoint, and that's allowing him to get the you know the right profile and and he's just executing. I feel like a lot of fastballs to start with, and then that's setting everything else up. I, I feel like he's doing a good job of mixing in his changeup. Obviously, he's, you know the sliders and, and the ch and the curveball, but I feel like it all starts with. Um, I feel like he's in a really good place with his fastball. What's the feeling like when you see him strike out 13 and retire the last 12 that he faced? Um, it's just good to see. You know, I, I mean, there were, he, he just never really had that lull. Um, I felt like he was kind of on the attack all night. And again, I just think, you know, he, he's, you know, dictating counts, you know, for, for running up, you know, a big strikeout number. It didn't seem like there were a lot of deep counts necessarily. Again, I looked up. Um, you know, in the middle of his outing, I think he had 40 strikes and 13 balls, similar to what Monty did last night. So I think he's just pounding the strike zone. And, and obviously, when he's ahead, he's got a lot of weapons to put you away with. Judge homered yesterday, three for five with a home run again today. Just how encouraged are you by what you've seen from him the last two days at the yeah, plate? Yeah, really good at bats. Came out right away, jumped on the first pitch, smoked that ball back through the middle. Um, off the pitcher, um, a good job uh, with the runner on third and two outs, just kind of shortening up and, and taking it the other way. I thought that was a really good at bat, and then obviously really got into one to to really give us those insurance runs and and kind of finish off a great night for him. But it, it's definitely good to see him, uh, you know, stringing together some good at bats. Dan Martin, go ahead. that um, you talked before the game about Garrett and Kyle working so well together last year and then the, the, how well they worked together tonight. Does that encourage you to, to think about that more going forward, pairing uh, the two of them up? It, 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 um, you know, I'll, I'll pair them up, I'm sure, a fair amount. Um, you know, but I also, you know, felt like, especially going back to opening day, I felt like Gary and Garrett were really good together. So I'm comfortable with both guys. But, you know, Higgy and him definitely have a have a good, you know, kind of thing going in a yin and a yang. And, and just the detail that goes into in between starts, um, you know, <clears throat> allows Higgy to kind of focus on that. So I'm not going to you know, go full all in on, on that by any means, just because I think it works well with Gary as well. But Higgy will definitely, uh, you know, if it works out in the week and that's the day off that kind of lines up, so be it. Thanks. Lindsay Adler, please unmute. Aaron, we, we sometimes see Garrett in, in the dugout uh, between innings, showing a lot of emotion, either pacing around, sort of seeming to work things out. What is that like? Like, what is what do you see him sort of processing when he's, um, you know, sort of worked up before going back out there to the mound? Dur during an outing? You mean when he's yeah, in? Yeah, or, or after. Um, I mean, you know, you guys have all talked to Garrett, and, you know, obviously he knows a lot about his craft and, and thinks a lot about his craft and thinks about – you know, everything from, you know, whether it's, you know, being in line physically and with his mechanics, but also just exactly how he wants to attack individual hitters. He's real specific about things he wants to do and sequences he wants to work out. So he's having and he has those conversations, um, you know, obviously with the catchers, but, you know, the pitching coach, me at times, um, he's just very he, he's he's also very approachable and easy to talk to, even though he's very intense during his outings. Um, he, he likes to, you know, he likes to talk through innings, what's coming up. Um, you know, he's usually very animated in that way. Tom, you talked yesterday about how you wouldn't want to face Jordan Montgomery. Yeah. Have you faced Garrett? <laughs> um, I, I did face him last year in quarantine. <laughs> uh, when, when, when he was throwing, he threw live here one day and PJ and I, Took some live at bats against them, actually. Did you get a hit? <laughs> no. <laughs> you kidding me? I'm f 
I'm, I was 47 at the time, and that's Garrett Cole yes. out there. So I, I think I fouled a couple off on him a couple times. So that was kind of like, kind of like a, a win. <laughs> yeah. Andy Martino, please unmute. Uh, Aaron, you mentioned Garrett's delivery, his fastball being in a good spot. Um, are you seeing something in that delivery that maybe the layperson wouldn't see that is in a little bit better shape than it, it sometimes maybe early next se or last season when he gave up some solo home runs in the <sighs> fastball? Um, I don't know that I nef necessarily see it with my naked eye. I just think the consistency of his fastball, um, you know, from from this time to early last year, for example, um, it, and it, it improved, I felt like, the whole way throughout the season and obviously on and through the playoffs. But I felt like since he's come in this year, I just feel like he's in a really good place with that. And um, I just feel like there's very few misses um, or, you know, pitches that leave him where he gets a little out of whack. I feel like he's just been in a really good tune of repeating his delivery and his mechanics. Got it. Thanks. Tom Merriam, please unmute. Aaron, can you talk about the contributions Jay Bruce made tonight, both defensively and offensively? Yeah, it was a big play um, there in the first inning. Obviously, you got a fast runner on third base, and, you know, Garrett getting in a little bit of a jam there in the first. And, um, you know, not an easy play, a nice backhanded play, you know, and with a fast runner, but he didn't rush, you know, kind of set his feet, good, strong throws, strike to home plate. Kind of one of those little under the radar, really good plays. Um, you know, obviously the homer to get us on the board. Um, you know, uh, do you have a couple walks? I believe. Um, so, yeah, uh, just just a good all around performance in a winning game by by Jay. Uh, go next to Joel Sherman, please unmute. <clears throat> Aaron, you had said a couple of times leading into the season that you thought you had a deep pitching staff. Uh, and that it would be good. Uh, is there a unifying reason you think why you have, is, keeping in mind it's just five games, why why the pitching has been so good? Is there any across the board reason? For that? Um, I th I think we have good pitchers. I mean, that's first and foremost. I, let's start with that. You know, and I felt like going into spring training. Uh, you know, I talked a lot about. I felt like our 15 through 20 or 13 through 20 competing for the those final spots on a roster um, is definitely deeper or as deep as since I've been here. I um, feel like all our guys, for the most part, had had good, strong springs where they were built up well. Um, and I feel like I feel like across the board, those guys are throwing the ball really well. I, I think our, you know, I think Matt's done a great job of kind of between him and Hart kind of leading this staff and getting them in a good place and really having really good ideas and plans going into games and series. Um, but I will go back to what you said, too. It, it, we're real early in this, so we got a long way to go. Um, but I like where our pitching culture is as far as the conversations that are being had the plans that are being put in place as a group, but also individually and how we're attacking teams. Um, and then the guys are really going out and so far executing well. If I could just follow you, you, you even agree it's early. Do you believe in this over 162 games and beyond talent? Do you think there's a reason why? Because again, the question will be asked about, I guess, durability over the long haul with so many guys who didn't have yeah. lots of workload the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be the kind of the million-dollar question throughout Major League Baseball this year is, is you know, who who's able to, you know, kind of stay strong, more, more so than even stay healthy, but stay strong and consistent throughout the year and, and knowing that you're going to have to lean on different guys for important innings at different times. Um, I certainly feel like we have the group capable of doing it and, and hopefully a, a plan that we can roll out that allows that to happen. Um, but, you know, it's a long, it's a long, long season. So we'll see. Take a couple more. Uh, Ron Blum, please unmute. Um, hi, Aaron. When you look at uh, Garrett this year compared to last year, is it a factor the second year being here being more comfortable and the normal start to the season rather than the stop and start? Um, 
I mean, I I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to lose sight of the fact that he was he was really good last year. Yeah. I mean, so um but yeah, I mean last year was weird on and hard and difficult on so many different levels for everybody. Um you know, so I'd like to think that you know <clears throat> Garrett is more comfortable now knowing, you know, everyone in the organization knowing his pitching coach and where to where to go for for information and his teammates and you know all those things having now a normal spring training ish um, you know hopefully all these things lead to you know a great pitcher going out there and and pitching the way he's capable throughout this year but um, I, I cer certainly like where he's at right now. Anthony Reaver, please unmute. Aaron, uh, two booking things so why did you decide to bring the infield in in the first inning and I, I didn't hear sorry sorry you kind of broke up why bring the infield in in the first inning and secondly why go with 25 man roster today um so the infield in there's just a man on third and one out um uh, that's a that, you know, that's a chance I'm willing to take there with, with our guy on the mound or, um, you know, second and third, maybe a different story. Um, obviously, with no outs, played the middle middle infielders back. But once we got to one out, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and cut that run down, you know, all the, pretty much all the time in that spot. Um, the 25 man, really, it was it was because – because Michael wasn't going to be available to us after his outing the other day um, and kind of figured we should start his clock now. We were probably going to send him down when we bring Wilson off the, the IL in a couple of days. And just in case something happens, we're, it, it'll, it would allow us to get Michael back quicker potentially. Um, and with options, you can't bring up uh, optioned or 40-man players that have already been optioned yet at this point in the season.